yo, 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 man. You already know what time it is, man. It's time for another For the Love of the Game video. And I want to thank y'all for coming back. Because if you're watching this right now, if you're listening to me right now, that means you came back. Because you've seen I dropped another video. And I appreciate it. If this is your first time watching, go ahead and hit the like button. Leave a comment. Hit the subscribe. Before the video. I feel like you might like it that much. Just hit it before the video. Today, I don't want to talk about what we're going to say yet. I want to give a little dramatic little feeling about how I feel about the NBA right now. Um, the NBA is the best it's been in a while. I would say that every night, great things happen. I seen this tweet, and it was like Bradley Beal had hit a game winner. Um, Dame went for 50, and it was like one more thing. But it was just like so much stuff happened in like a three-day span in the NBA. And the NBA, it's like how it was in 2012 and 13. When in the fact of there are so many good teams everywhere you look every night, like I said, there's something to look forward to. So this particular person, this particular team really peaked the last season. Uh, I'm Dame. Damian Lillard uh, last year, of course his playoff run, but before that he was playing great. Last year, I had my point guards as Steph, Kyrie, Russ, Dame, and that fifth person is always like interchangeable. It could be Kimba. I was real big on a healthy John Wall. Um, the fifth person, it's it's interchangeable. This so at the end of last year, that was with the the shot against OKC. You know, uh, the battle with him and Russ, all that. That was during that. I still had Russ above him because I've always said I feel like greatness is not about a year. You know, every everybody can be good for a year. It's time and time again repeating what you've done or taking it to the next level year after year after year. So that was the first year that Dame really caught my attention. And not caught my attention because I was a Dame fan. He said my brother when Dame was kind of on the rise. He was in the league already, but he was on the rise. Um, I was like, man, this dude is nice. I was watching his highlights, wanted to model my game after him. A guy named Stephen Curry kind of took it. You know, they were like neck and neck to me. You know, how what you got, I liked. And I, you know, Steph's game. I mean, you know, but... Dame has a whole lot in that. Both can shoot from wherever. Both can stretch the floor. Uh, both not the greatest on defense. You know, Dame, of course, a little better. Probably a little bit more solid with his body type. But both are complete offensive problems in top guards in the NBA. But for me, it's Steph. I'll get on that later, though. But Dame ends it off. You know, they, they did lose uh, to Golden State, of course. But Dame had a marvelous year, a miraculous playoffs. And he, he just played great all around comes this year they're struggling they pick up Milo you know the whole Milo thing everybody said Milo should be in the league boom they grab Milo bring him over to the squad a nice solid piece I like that I do but what I really want to get to is Dame in his last 10 games and before I do that I want to say I'm not a guy who pays too much attention to stretches a 10 game stretch or a six game stretch I like to look at averages because a stretch explains that time the the season has that time when you are struggling when you are okay it has it all in your season average i like that i don't really do stretches man because stretches are like when you're doing extremely good or when you're doing extremely bad i don't like that but this stretch right here needed to be talked about by dame lillard just because of what he was doing let me break it down to you 30 six points a game 36.7 you round that's 37 points a game four rebounds a game eight assists a game and it's 8.7 so again if you round that's nine assists but we're not we're saying 8.7 assists so just that that's 36 four and eight 50 percent from the field goal 47 percent from three that means almost half of the shots that of the three point shots that Damian Lillard is shooting in these last ten games are going in. Almost half, not quite half, but forty seven percent is great. And eighty eight from the free throw line. He's almost a 50, 40, 90 player in this in this stretch. And being a 50, 40, 90 player is great. That's what you want to aim for. In this ten game stretch, he has made eighty one three pointers. In this 10 game stretch, he has made 81 three pointers. 81 three pointers. That's almost eight a game. Not saying he's hitting eight a game. You know, some games he may go for eight. 
the game might like go for four, but the next game he goes for nine. You know what I'm saying? It's just but 81 in a 10 game stretch. Also, not only is he playing well, but they're seven and three in their last 10 with a debatable loss to Utah. I thought Damian Lillard was 100% right when the refs, you know, stated their apology, um, stating that they missed a call. If you don't know, they played, they were playing the Utah Jazz late in the game. Dame goes up on a layup. People say he might have been fouled. I don't buy the foul because the defender went straight up. In a little bit of contact with the game on the line, you cannot call that. Damian Lillard's ball hit the backboard. Rudy Gobert then blocked it. But once it hits the backboard, that you cannot touch the ball again. Blocked it after it clearly hit the backboard. The refs missed it, did not call goal 10. I, I don't believe that's the reason the Trailblazers lost because they did have a chance. Um, a wide open three in the corner, wide open three. Um, to make it they missed so they let that opportunity slip but a definite fault on the refs and Matt Barnes let out this tweet and I completely agree with him and he just said that refs should be fined and suspended for that I'm not a big ref critic I think they're amazing if you hear me watch a game and you'll say like refs they miss calls but it's like we have the benefit of replay refs do not have that refs make it on the spot and usually, most of the time, it's accurate. It's the right call. And they make it on the spot. No replay, no review. More, another thing refs should do, though, is they should call it, you know, like you should call it. They should have called it a goal 10 and then looked. And if it wasn't a goal 10, you take it away. I think that in football, too, you know, sometimes they, they will call a call that will blow the play dead and it wasn't the right call. I feel like they should do the thing that lets the play go on and then you get the benefit of going back and looking at it and you can change it from there. But don't make the wrong call and the play could have kept going. But like I said, Matt Barnes said that. I agree, man, because when players act up or they do anything, get a technical, they, they lose money. These refs, this is their career too. They need to be on their tiptoes and on their P's and Q's. And if you miss a call, depending on the severity of the call, you should be fine or suspended. It's not that hard. Take care, do better. Another thing, though, man, I'm just reading everything he's doing. It's just crazy. He has the NBA record of 49 three-pointers made in his last six games. I mean, made in not his last six, but made in six games. 49 three-pointers made in six games. On average, that equals eight a game. But like I said earlier, he may not be hitting exactly eight a game. You know, they're just sporadic. But 49 in the last six games. He's the first player in NBA history to average first player in NBA history to average 45 points in 10 assists over a six game span. Damian Lillard, ladies and gentlemen. And also the Trailblazers are now ninth in the West. Um, it's getting right before All-Star break, which is the midway point of the season. And Dame was, you know, pretty upset when he talked about the Utah loss because they're in a playoff race. They're not as good as they've been in the past year. So they Every game really counts for them. They're in a playoff race, and refs are blowing calls and, and essentially losing the game for them. So I agree. But ninth in the West with a lot of season left to go, a lot of upside. Uh, I, I see them finishing about fifth or sixth. I don't know how far they'll go. They're usually at about four or five. So fifth is the lowest that they probably want to go. Sixth and seventh and eighth, you know. I don't know. The fifth, you always have a good chance of winning the first round because you play the four. You guys are like neck and neck. But just amazing numbers by Damian Lillard, man, and is now in the top three guards. I guess um, this year, point guards, it would go him first for right now, Kyrie. But my list would still go Kyrie above Dame. Damian Lillard right now, ladies and gentlemen, is the best player in the NBA over Giannis, over AD, right now, Damian Lillard is the best player in the NBA. I don't see him winning MVP. I still think Giannis is going to get that because that's Giannis' this season. We're talking about a great span here by Damian Lillard that could not go unheard. I had to drop this video. I needed y'all to really see how he was, see what he was doing and see how well he's playing. And if you like more videos like this, I suggest you guys to keep tuning in. If y'all could though, man, please watch my last video here. Subscribe to my channel right here. And as always, I'll be back with more bangers in a little bit. And I appreciate y'all for watching.